What's up guys, Commander Alex here, and today we are going to be talking about the new 1.3 update for Vainglory. So I'm going to be going over pretty much everything that was added to the game, and I'm going to be giving a few of my own opinions on this. And in the background, you're actually going to see some 1.3 patch gameplay. I don't actually know what hero it's going to be, because I'm recording this before I can actually play the game, but I do have all the patches with me, so we should be able to at least get the audio correct for you guys, and then the, uh, the gameplay is going to be coming later. And I'll put it all together and get it to you guys as quickly as possible. So let's hop into things here with Vox, the newest hero to the fold. Um, I did do a hero spotlight on him, so if you guys want to learn a little bit about him, you can go watch that. Um, just to break it down, his heroic perk is Julia's Song. Basically, he gets a barrier when he attacks people, and it allows him to have resonance, which means that he can uh, bounce basic attacks between people who have resonance applied to them. Sonic Zoom is his little uh, blink ability where he can kind of quickly move to a target location and throw out two auto attacks and when that's overdrive the first attack applies resonance and then pulse uh, applies resonance to everyone in a large area around him and slows people which is harder or uh, rather stronger in the center closer to where the pulse was emitted from and it also um, kind of shows people on the map if you can't actually see them by showing a little blinking dot where they are on the map uh, so it's sort of like a sonar sort of deal if you if you kind of can picture that and then there's wait for it which is his ultimate where he sends out a uh, short little refresh of resonance and that's going to bounce the resonance off of everybody and then the uh, second shockwave that comes after is going to deal a bunch of crystal damage and silence enemies and uh, basically it's just a two part ultimate that can really really wreck people if you get a bunch of heroes all in a close, uh, close proximity to each other. So now we're going to look at the features added. We have spectator mode now. Um, the one thing that I'm really excited about this is that I'm actually going to be able to be featuring a lot of high elo matches. Now obviously I couldn't do that before, A because I'm not a super high elo player, and B because there was no real way to be in a high elo match unless you were playing in it, and uh, most high elo players don't want to take up their, uh, their iPad's processor power with uh, recording. So I'm going to be able to actually hop in a bunch of guild matches where they're screaming against each other and I'll be recording for them shoutcasting and you guys are going to get to see all that so hopefully you can learn a little bit from some of the best players in Bang Glory and basically it's just going to allow a third party to watch a game while not actually playing in it and that uh, allows only in uh, private matches and I believe it's two one for each team if I'm not mistaken. Um, other than that we have profile updates basically you now have bronze silver and gold for your skill tier and this means that uh, it's a little bit easier to see if you're about to fall down into a lower skill tier or if you're about in the middle of your skill, skill tier or if you're about to hop into a higher level skill tier and then they also redid some of the artwork to make it uh, more focused on the actual skill tier and less focused on the glory or the karma which is um, more to do with uh, AFKs and that sort of deal. As far as uh, honor and and reporting players post-match, you can now give them thumbs up and a thumbs down and specify why you want to report them. Basically, this means that we now have a reporting system and we can call out people who are being poops and, uh, and that we don't want playing in the game. Now, obviously, if you abuse this ability, your votes will carry less weight than other players. So just keep that in mind. Don't go thumbs downing everyone who didn't get a perfect score in your game because it's just not it's just not going to mean anything eventually. Um, then if we scroll down here, we have the gold and level acceleration in practice mode shop. So basically now there is a pot of gold that will instantly give you 1000 gold to explore item builds easily and a level juice, which will instantly grant you one level. And this is only in practice mode guys. This is not an actual game just to be clear. Uh, but it's so that you guys can easily kind of, uh, explore different builds and explore different ability trains and try to really explore your heroes a lot easier without having to wait for a bunch of gold to build up and then buy what you want. Um, so it's a nice easy way to do that. As far as gameplay changes, we have position declarations. This is in the actual matchmaking screen when, screen when you uh, choose a hero. You can now say if you're going to be laning, jungling, or roaming. Um, this is going to be really nice for those people who like to play off meta positions like Scarf Jungle or um, I've even seen Arden Lane, though I don't really particularly like that one. But it's going to allow you to tell your teammates that you're going to try and go off meta, and uh, it's going to allow them to hopefully adjust accordingly. And now we also have instantly used consumables. This means that infusions and uh, possibly even health pots, I can't confirm that for sure though, um, you are going to be basically consumed immediately once you have a six item build. So that means if your build is completely uh, full, 
then you won't have to sell an item, buy an infusion, buy another infusion, use both of them, and then rebuy the item back. This way you basically can waste less time and you don't have to have quite as much gold to start uh, getting infusions at the end of the game. And I just got a Skype message, sorry about that, I believe that was playoff beard though, so we'll have to uh, look into that. As far as XP changes, your team will now earn XP faster when behind in levels and earn slower when ahead in levels. Basically this means that you can't snowball quite as hard. If your team's ahead by three levels, then the enemy team's going to be earning levels a lot quicker and your team's not going to be earning them quite as quick. So hopefully everyone should get to level 12 at about the same time. That being said, I do believe that if you have an advantage, this isn't going to basically turn the tide 100% in the opposite direction. It's going to be just a little bit more of a balance. As far as attack speed reduction adjustments, attack speed reduction such as Atlas Pauldron will never reduce the auto attack animation below the basic attack speed and attack cooldowns are still able to go below the basic attack speed. So basically this means if someone doesn't have attack speed at all, an Atlas Pauldron won't reduce it below that attack speed, just to be clear. So you only want to buy an Atlas Pauldron now if they actually have a, uh, a type of attack speed item that's going to be um, making their attack speed quicker because if you're buying an Atlas Pauldron and a, they don't have any attack speed, then it's not going to do anything to them. It's just going to be less than a uh, full metal jacket. That being said, attack cooldowns still can go below, below the uh, base attack speed or base uh, cooldown speed. So those aren't uh, under the same boat as attack speed reductions. Moving on here though, we have hero balance changes. Kashka got some really, really interesting changes here. Her armor and shield are now reduced in half up to 64 at max sacks. Um, twirly, Duth, twirly Death, not Duth, I don't think that's a word, um, has a boosted attack damage reduced from uh, 50, 85, 20, 50, uh, 155, 250 to 30, 55, 80, 105, and 90. So basically that uh, attack damage boost that you get when you use Twirly Death on a uh, minion or an enemy hero or anyone really, uh, isn't going to be quite as strong and it's going to not scale quite as well either but it also now has an 80% crystal ratio rather than a 35% so a crystal Kashka is still going to hit incredibly hard with early death possibly even harder than she did before so that's something to uh, keep an eye out for and I'm sure that that's going to be possibly exploited to uh, to an extreme by some players now we also have base armor and shields were now increased by 24 um, from 18 to 62, 18 being level 1, 62 being level uh, 12, to 42 to 86, meaning that she is a lot more uh, more tanky as far as her armor and shields go. Cruel also got some changes. He now has a uh, charge up delay in his brush for Shadows of Power Me of 1.5 seconds rather than 3 seconds, so he can um, use it a little bit quicker and possibly use it as an escape. You run into a bush. When they're about to enter the bush, you wait for 1.5 seconds, then charge right back out and uh, that might be useful for getting away from enemies. We'll have to see how people use that. Also, her uh, Dead Man's Rust can now proc, so you can use things like Shiver Steel and Aftershock. Um, I would assume even a Frostburn would apply to that as well. I don't really know what it's going to be, but it means that you can proc with Dead Man's Rush, and that basically counts as a uh, basic attack view, but it's going to have the same like, damage and stuff as it did before. Also, the cooldown acceleration for Dead Man's Rush has uh, gone down a little bit. It is 12 at level 1 now as it was before, but at level 6 or yeah, at level at level 5, it is now level it is now 8 seconds rather than 10 seconds. So that's just a little bit of a quicker cooldown reduction there. Um, and then the barrier that you get is uh, now a little bit more. It's 75% crystal ratio rather than 50% crystal ratio, so it's going to be a little bit beefier of a barrier. The Spectral Smite also got changed up, so it used to go 60, 120, 180, 240, 400, and uh, now it goes 100, 150, 200, 250, 400. So it uh, scales to the same amount at max, but it starts off a little bit stronger early game, so that's something to keep in mind. Also, the damage per stack has been changed now. It used to go 30, 45, 60, 75, 110. Now it goes 16, 34, 52, 70. 110 so it scales to the same amount at max, but it's a little bit weaker in the beginning So uh, keep that in mind as well as far as hero stats. He got pretty much boost, boosted all across the board. It used to be that he had um, a 71 health uh, Per level to 78 health now He used to have four armor per level now It's five armor per level and his shield used to be four shield per level now It is five shield per level. So we just got boosted as far as the stats across the board goes 
in that regard. Adagio also got some changes. Adagio has his heal over time duration down from 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to 3 across the board. That means that his heals do not uh, take longer to apply. The higher you upgrade Gift of Fire, it's going to be the exact same amount of time, 3 seconds across the board, no matter how many times you upgrade Gift of Fire. And the heal over time ratio is now up to 20% rather than 8%. That's going to mean that it's a little bit stronger and it's uh, really going to help out your teammates a lot more. As far as his burst, burst heal is down a little bit. Um, it used to be 55, 60, 65, 70, 165. Now it is 55, 60, 65, 70, 135. So it's not quite as much of a burst heal, which is uh, kind of interesting. So you're not going to be able to get those clutch days maybe. Uh, but it's still nothing to uh, to shy away from there. We also have the burst heal ratio being increased here. It is used to be 21, and now it is 50. That means that if you're building a crystal adagio, which is what they're kind of trying to shift adagio towards, um, your burst here is actually going to go up. So it got nerfed as far as the base, but its uh, ratio went up. So that means that if you're building a crystal adagio, burst heal in general is actually better for you. As far as his hero stats go, the weapon power at level 12 for him used to be 139, now it is 118, and his attack speed at level 12 used to be 113%, now it is just 100%. And Pedal had her attack speed reduced as well. At level 12, she used to have 136 attack speed, now she only has 111 attack speed, 111 there. And then a Celeste got a couple changes that I believe actually make her very strong now, which I'm going to be interested to uh, see. We have her crystal ratio for her heliogenesis up a 25%. It used to be at 100%. Now it's 125% crystal ratio. That's that's pretty deadly, guys. I'm, I'm expecting to have some really, really uh, damaging heliogenesis. And her supernova crystal ratio got boosted by 50%. It used to be uh, 120. Now it is 175. So that's uh, pretty deadly as well. Or did it get boosted by more than that? 20. Let me do the math in my head, guys. Uh, it got boosted by 55%. Sorry about that. Needed to uh, needed to do some uh, carry the ones and everything. Now we got Solar Storm. It no longer collides with lame minions or non-objective jungle monsters. That means the only thing it can collide with is enemy heroes, the Kraken, the gold mine, or your, uh, your minion mine. So basically, you can seal those big objective things and you can hit enemy heroes. But you're not going to have to worry about like accidentally hitting lame minions. Also, it can, I believe, still hit... Um, turrets just so you guys know but it shouldn't do any damage to them seeing as it never did damage before and then the collision accuracy has improved as well it would no longer hit enemies behind Celeste this is really just um, I know I have had some times where I've been casting it and there's been an enemy behind me and it'll actually end up hitting them even though I wasn't planning to hit them so it's just a little uh, a little more accurate and then her projectile speed was slowed from 22 meters per second to 16 meters per second this is gonna be really important so you really have to uh, kind of send your solar storm out in advance to uh, finish the kraken or whatever you're trying to steal so just keep that in mind scarf reflex block anyone yes scarf can now use his uh abilities that are his let me let me, let me put this in the correct terms his item abilities can be used while he's using his dragon's breath but his regular abilities can still not be used however i believe that his um, little trick that you can do a reflex block um, while using his Dragon's Breath to use your regular abilities is still in the game. I did a video about that a while back, but I still need to confirm that that's still in the game. So uh, if you guys have any questions about that, ask me in the comments down below, and I'll be sure to get you a direct answer. As far as Taka goes, he had some bugs fixed where his critical strikes weren't triggering, which was uh, was not good because most Taka builds actually work off of critical strikes. As far as item changes go, the Shiver Steel is uh, a lot less dangerous for range characters now. It used to have a slow duration of 0.8 seconds, meaning that high attack speed range characters could basically make someone immobile, but now it only has a uh, slow duration of 0.4 seconds for range characters, so it makes it a lot less uh, useful for range characters. But I believe that's a good thing, because Shiver Steel is a very good kiting item and probably too good before this patch. As far as performance improvements go, we have uh, Taka not consistently critical strikes, um, bug, fi bug fix for practice mode only where the Kraken had too little health. That is because the Kraken actually, actually scales off of how much gold has been collected in the game, and that means that uh, if there's only one person in the game, the Kraken isn't actually going to be kind of balanced for that only one person encounter. So uh, they fixed that so that it's more like a realistic game where you'd be playing with six people and a lot more gold would have been collected. And then some miscellaneous bug fixes and performance enhancements as well. 
as far as uh, Android goes. They have ICE purchases now, better stability, graphical quality improvements, and uh, fixed issues with double taps, that's rapid touches, and battery life saving when app is in background. Also, they have the uh, Taka critical strike fix and the practice mode Kraken fix. So uh, that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed the gameplay in the background. But I have to uh, get back to the game because I A, have practice to go to, and B, have to play some of this awesome new patch and get you guys a bunch of videos out as quickly as possible. So I'll talk to you guys in the next video and become a lieutenant today. See ya.